I welcome you to part three of our series, Pilgrim's Progress. Uh, we're touching on various um, aspects of the story, not every single uh, incident, but things that I feel would prov uh, really provide good inspiration. Um, the last session we pointed out that there's nothing wrong with uh, pointing out that uh, we we should have some sobering thoughts uh, about about the future, about uh, about God's judgment there, and uh, the future of the world. There's there's um, there's a, a great many which uh, seem to suggest that well we don't we don't need to use anything to uh, motivate the, the the sinner to about the end of the world, that's not a negative message. That's uh, uh, not a positive uh, presentation of the gospel. But, you know, we pointed out, you know, this was the Apostle Peter in, in, his, in his writings, which warned about uh, that the world would be uh, dissolved and what manner of people ought we to live and be in all holy conversation and lifestyle, uh, looking for the coming of the Lord. Uh, so, uh, you know, Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, told people straight many times when it comes to uh, serving Him. Uh, he He didn't make it. He didn't make it easy. He told about the. the, the the, the seriousness of this walk. Um, when I say he didn't make it easy, well, uh, Jesus said, uh, come unto me all you which are heavy laden. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I believe that's in uh, Matthew 10. But he he was very straight. Uh, he, he showed people what their responsibilities were. If you're going to be a disciple, of Christ in in Matthew chapter ten, uh, verse uh, verse thirty eight, we read, Jesus said, "He that taketh not his cross and follows not after me, is not worthy of me. And he that findeth his life, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find it." Uh, that sounds pretty. That sounds pretty direct. Uh, well, Jesus always gave a positive message. He he did, but giving people, telling people straight uh, something sometimes, uh, it is is a positive message. Uh, in Luke's Luke's Gospel, chapter twenty, verse eighteen. Let's have a read there. Uh, Luke's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 18. We read Jesus is talking to the Pharisees, and uh, he said, What is this then that is written, the stone which the builders rejected, the same hath become the head of the corner? Now watch what he says here. He said, Whosoever shall fall upon this stone shall be broken, but on whosoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder, to powder. I mean, that's pretty direct. I mean, you know, you, you can have it one way. Uh, Jesus didn't apologize for his direct st statements. He said, you allow your life to be have a, have a brokenness about you, where you're humble, when you're, and you uh, take take the things of God seriously, and if you will break yourself on on the Word of God, uh, it, you know that's that's the easier, better way to go. But if you don't, he said, people which are obstinate, uh, they will be ground into powder. Now, how was how's that for a positive message? Well, it was positive. Jesus also said uh, that he came to give life and give life more abundantly. 
Uh, I'm not suggesting that there isn't there isn't another um, there there isn't balance to what Jesus wants us to talk about. There most certainly is, but we can't be imbalanced on just um, saying sweet, sweet, nicey, nicey words to to accomplish having the saint be become motivated. So. Um, so um, in the Pilgrim's Progress story, uh, he meets evangelist. The Christian meets evangelist, coming where he where he's wandering out in the fields and among the city of destruction, and he. He basically tells him, evangelist tells him, in seeing that uh, Christian is burdened down and and under very depressed and disillusioned on on how to solve the his his guilt problem, the 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 weight on his back, which means his sin, and and evangelist appears and tells him that you need to flee. You need to flee from the wrath to come. I believe John the Baptist, he used the same term. Uh, term. Uh, in other words, you need to come to God with force and zeal and determination. And flee means in no uncertain terms, get on with it. Don't just stay here and he... Christian asked evangelist, he said, well, what, what, what should I do? And evangelist pointed uh, at, quite a di at quite a distance away to a gate on the far side of a field, and, and there was this shining light on, on the gate, which, which lit up the gate. He asked him if he could see it. He said, I, I think I can. I think I can. Now, if I might humorously just suggest here, uh, <laughs> evangelists probably had to give him binoculars to see this because, well, let's just say, as we pointed out, this is like a journey uh, <clears throat> through through different terrain. Uh, let's just... Let's just perhaps envision this is maybe two or three miles away. You'd kind of need binoculars to see that. But, well, we can we can just say that he gave them as such. Because uh, it can't be anywhere close because uh, we read the story as we come into the story up ahead. Christian has to go through two different trials with... Uh, was pliable while he there is the what's called the th slow of despond, or I call it the swamp of despondency, and then there is also he has to go to a, a Mr. Legality's house. That's another stop along the way. So it has to be some some distance between himself and this gate with the light. So. Oh, we can just say that he gave him some binoculars. He could see it off to a distance. Maybe it was three miles away, okay? Just having some fun with this. But uh, So he, 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 Christian sees this and, and sees the wicked gate, and that's a metaphor for uh, the gate as a metaphor for what, what Jesus said. Uh, in Matthew chapter 7, 13, uh, that there's the narrow pass and the, the, there's, there's a straight pass and the narrow gate. Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 7, 13, that one's must, one must enter into through that gate. Not the wide, wide, uh, the wide, wide is the gate that goes to destruction, but narrow is the gate that goes to life, to life, and uh, straight is the pass. And um, so he sees this, he sees this, and he starts, uh, he starts approaching onto it. He leaves, 
he leaves um, Evangelist and starts on his way. And uh, along the way, he meets two, two more individuals. Uh, one is called Obstinate, and the other one is called Pliable. So these are uh, negative negative characteristics these are in person form and so what is obstinate you know uh, as a person he comes to influence christian uh the def dictionary defines obstinate as someone who stubbornly refuses uh refuses to change or you know any course of action when when attempted to be be persuaded to do so obstinate is headstrong and unyielding and inflexible you know uh th th this is a this these type of individuals and of course we live in a world where there are many of them which are obstinate against the gospel and this message uh, God in his message uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 25-28 uh, we read let, let me just look up that verse of scripture 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 25-26 uh, it says, the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you know your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, nor many mighty, nor many noble are called. In other words, uh, the, these individuals tend to be uh, they tend to be obstinate. They don't see their need for God. Matthew 5 verse 3 uh, speaks of uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit for they shall see the kingdom of God. The poor in spirit not necessarily mean poor financially but to be poor means to recognize a need. So if you're poor in spirit, blessed are those who see their need for spiritual things. Uh, one which is obstinate or very, many times very educated people are, uh, have a lot of pride or if they're wealthy, the, the, these are the people that tend to tend to uh, be that way. James chapter 1 verse 21 says, We're to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save our souls. Uh, an obstinate person will not, will not consider being meek. They, you know, they basically uh, are, are a person of the world. They think they've They've got it all figured out. They've uh, that they're independent, that they're self-made, that uh, you know, basically priding themselves that they don't need God. And so they uh, they very seldom they such individuals very seldom will 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 turn in repentance to to the Lord. Now, sometimes they will, but. Like Paul the Apostle seemingly was one such individual. He was uh, very strong and obstinate against the claims of Christ, but God did change him. Okay, but as a usual thing, obstinate means very much yet opposed, and this is the individual Christian is talking to. We'll pick this up in our next session. Thanks.